Welcome back to my bull nation. S Gibbs here for another exciting dish. It is not Jordan, it is not my dad, but it is the Mad Dad, aka the Laser Show, the internet's most passionate show about John Madden football 2011. The game we all love, the game I love, the game I eat, sleep, and drink about. Wake up at 2.44 in the morning and film a Madden TV. That's what I do. That's why I love this game. I love this game. Show number 91, fellas. Uh, we're creeping up on our show 100. I'm excited for it. Uh, but today is our shotgun passing from the Pittsburgh Steelers playbook. Very excited about that. It's a great, uh, um, you know, I shouldn't say it's great. It is, it's subpar at best. Um, they do have the gun trio formation, but um, I don't really like the gun trio formation that much. WTK does like that from the forums, Wayne Tankiki. Um, I'm more, I'm a bigger fan of the single uh, shotgun bunch formation as it has uh, one of my favorite base plays in the game, uh, the mesh bunch, single back bunch as I like to call it. We'll show you what that means a little later. But um, quick couple things I want to talk about real quick. Uh, in the Pittsburgh Steelers passing offense, they have some uh, big targets we talked about before earlier in the week. Matt Spath, uh, Heath Miller, Heinz Ward, great with catching traffic. Let's not forget about Big Bad Mike Wallace. He's a big-time burner. He's a guy that you want to look to get the ball downfield. Roethlisberger does have that big cannon, so you should be able to take advantage and get the ball deep downfield to Wallace. Um, so not recognize these type of things that uh, Mike Wallace is that guy that you want on that field. Um, if you guys do want the play versus play breakdown to come back, just I want you to type a 1 in the comment below. Put a 1 and whatever else you want. If, you, if you'd rather just kind of go through things, get right into the tips, we can go over depth charts as we go by, uh, but that's something that we're going to showcase today is the depth charts of the offense for the Steelers, both running and uh, passing. We'll go over those today. Um, other housekeeping thing I want to talk about. Uh, on the Madden Bible forums, you can head over to uh, the Madden Bible forums and check out the Madden 12 wish list. What we're putting up is uh, we want to find out what you guys want in the game for Madden 12. We, you know, we want to hear what you guys want. Uh, just give your feedback because we always like to hear the feedback. And you know, it's kind of fun. You know, we can hope, we can wish, we can all you know cross our fingers that the, it'll get into the game, or you know, it's something that we can all you know talk about, deliberate, come out with good ideas, uh, we deliber deliberate about these ideas for the game. So um, you know, make sure you get out there, make sure you post what your thoughts are, your feelings, what your requests are. Uh, we'd love to hear them for you. That's on the Madden Bible forum. So uh, without further ado, though, let's get into this zoomy zoom. Let's get into the breakdown for the Pittsburgh passing attack. And here's our zoomy zoom. Ah, uh, zoom, zoom, zoom. Ah, uh, zoom, zoom, zoom. Brought to you by ah, uh, zoom, zoom, zoom. So here's our zoom. And that looks about good. For those of you that don't know and are unclear, as always, fellas, it is DOS. DOS Laser Show. Show 91. Can you believe we've done 91? Can you actually believe I've done 91 episodes? There's a lot of people out there that said, you know, Gibbs, you're not going to have enough stuff to talk about uh, for 91 episodes. You're not going to have enough stuff to talk about at all. Just for those out there, too. 94 days away. 94 away. Guys, I'm not stopping. This is a, this is a full year show. This is a show that goes not, it's non-stop. It's going to continue right into bed 12. So, you know, you take it or like it. I mean, that's just, that's just what's going to happen. All right. So, let's first go over the depth chart. And, and the depth chart is really, isn't as big of a deal um, for certain situations as because I, I, I kind of cater to my, my base formation and my other plays and, and I sub guys into where I need them to be. So, um, you know, typically, you know, you do your depth chart, your best receiver number one, which I would probably do is Mike Wallace with his 98 speed. Um, next, I'd probably make sure I'd keep Heinz Ward on the field just because he had great catch in traffic. Believe it or not, I would take out Randall L. I consider Emmanuel Sanders and then Antonio Brown. I put him here to back him up as well. So we do have some pretty good speed on the field there um, to match up with what we're trying to do. Just for also, I'll put Matt Spath in there. Uh, here is Spath. I, I start him at the one tight end spot just because I like to get Miller out wide. Um, but you know, you might want to put Miller uh, ahead of him. But again, it's all just preference of what you like. Halfback, clearly I'm going to put Mendenhall. 
Um, second halfback, Moeldy Moore, he doesn't have the breakaway speed, but he's the most agile back that we have out of our re remaining halfbacks. Uh, quarterback, I do like to put um, a little Dennis Dixon in my life as the backup, just because he is such a wrinkle factor with that 84 speed. You can't really deny that. Um, he, he mixes things up. Ben Roethlisberger, obviously, number one. Offensive line, got to get Max Starks in there, even though he's injured. Our left guard spot, uh, let's see... Start our big bad Willie Colon. He's injured as well, but we'll start him there. Right tackle. Center, we got Pouncey, even though he was injured in the game. Big Doug Ligurski stepped in to play well in the Super Bowl, so good for him. Kudos to him for stepping in. Um, let's see. And we'll stick with Raymond Foster there as we stuck our other tackle, Willie Colon, at the left guard just because we were a little weak at, at the guard spot. Well, you know what? Actually, we'll put Kimoto there, and we'll put, uh, we'll put Colon back at the tackle. That's what our depth chart's going to look like for the offense. Uh, now, my base play that I always like to say, I love base plays because they allow you to analyze the defense, figure what's going on. Um, I like to come out in the mesh, the mesh bunch, as you can tell. And the reason it's a bunch is because it's compressed. So if I quick audible, audible on the play, as you can see, Heinz Ward goes over to the other side. So as you can see, this mesh play also gives me a, a man zone read after the snap because it is compressed. Uh, and really just what I like about it is that I have quick reads. I, I have a, a quick flat read to the left so I can hit Mendenhall in that little wheel route. Great play there to Mendenhall. Uh, don't forget I have Spath now over to the right here, a quick flat route. Um, if he's open, he's open to that flat. Over the middle of the field now I have two, two great crossing patterns over the middle of the field. Just got to pick my poison and find the guy that's open. Um, next I have a, a deep corner route. We all know that deep corner route, how effective it is this year. Uh, if we can get that one-on-one -on -one matchup with a guy we like, like Mike Wallace, that 98 speed, that's a big, big mismatch, big problem. Uh, what I also like about this is I have the ability to call max protection. I can block Mendenhall, I can block Spath, and then I can put Sanders on a streak, put Hans Ward <clears throat> on a drag over the middle. Uh, and now I created an interesting scenario for myself. i got some max protection, make sure I can't get uh, pressure on me. Um, so that's just the, kind of the basic setup that I like to do. Off of that, I'll, what I'll take, tend to do is put Hines Ward on a slant out. Uh, then I also have uh, Wallace on a slant out. So I have uh, two slant out types to the, to the outside. Now I can hit Hines Ward on the, the RC to the sideline. Uh, he's got good catch in traffic. He might not be that tall, but he actually gets it done surprisingly uh, because he has got great, great, great catch in traffic. As you can see, spin him around and that great catch in traffic you can get him there, um, really start causing problems for your opponent. Um, some other options you have here too, say if your opponent's playing some type of cover, uh, they're playing cover three, you recognize they're in the cover three, you're going to streak those two slot guys because that cover three is weak in that area. Let it, the defense get behind there. As you can see, you can hit those seams. It's a tough throw. It's a tough pass. Maybe it won't be complete all the time, but that's, that's part of the game is taking those risks. So the cover three, as you can see, both those streaks, they're going and they're putting pressure on that area. And I also want to note as well, this deep safety has a decision to make. Is he going to cover that streak over the middle or is he going to cover that sideline route? So as you can see, uh, you have the great ability to beat and, and break down any type of zone coverage here. Um, I'll show you that one more time. See what the, the defender chooses. He chooses the deep streak. And now I have the deep side. I hope. So we do have the ability to really, really attack uh, man coverage. Um, if you want to attack it even more, here's a way how you do it. I slant out Ward. I'll tend to block Spath. Um, slant out Ward. Slant, uh, streak Mendenhall. Streak Sanders. And uh, slant out Wallace. This is that four verts type scheme that I always talk about. Um, here it is. We'll show you here. Oh, defender got in. But as you can see, uh, Mendenhall was streaking. He was about to go into uh, open space there. Uh, yeah, he would have. And also a far right guy here was going to be open. Um, so we did have some options there uh, that were open. So just this play in general, um, it's one of my favorite base plays. I always talk about base plays because it just has quick options, a lot of different places I can go with the ball, uh, two routes over the middle, two flat routes. I can max protection. I can hit a deep sideline. I can flood zones. So overall, this is just a great play. Uh, we also have another play that I like after this as well. Same type formation, but this time we have a, a tight end that's on a blue route. And I want to note something to Mike Wallace, that little fade route. Uh, what's important about that is the following. See how he gets that inside position? So if you can get some guy there, um, you know, Mike Wallace is who I have there now. But if you can get a guy that's got some good height, some good catching traffic, what's important to note here is watch the angle. So 
Typically, if I just had him on a streak, the defender would have pretty good position on here. But what happens is that little fade route he runs, a little tight fade, he gets that inside position. Now, if I throw an inside pass lead, I can go up for the ball. Uh, and, it's, and, you know, it's not an easy catch, but for the most part, it's going to be there uh, typically every play. So there it is again. Um, if they're not man coverage, if they're if they're in zone, uh, zone it'll be there as well. Just got to find it and wait for the, the play to develop into the zone. So you have it again. Wait a little longer. See, there you have it. It hits the seam, and you go up for the ball. So it's different timing, different scenario, but um, that's why you also have your other reads. You have the quick flat route. So if it is zone, you have the route over the middle of the field. It, if it is zone, as you can see, oh, oh, bad throw there by Big Ben. But as you can tell, uh, you do have the options, as you can see. Uh, Watt, Heinz Ward would have been open, but he got chipped. I, that was a bad read. I should have gone to the flat. As you can see, the flat defender chipped Ward left. Mendenhall wide open. I was expecting Ward to break over the middle a little sooner off that bump. Um, and then he made a bad throw. Actually, it looked like he was going to go to uh, the guy over the deep middle part of the field. But, again, against man-to-man, -man, this is a great little play. They don't really see this coming. They, they think they're, they're defended well. Um, and then you hit him with that inside streak. Let me show you what it would look like uh, if I just had him on a streak. So if he's just on a streak... You know, and then you know, now he's got a guy right on him, and now you see the you see the difference. The, so there is a big difference between just a streak and what we actually have with that one specific uh, route. Uh, what's also nice about this play again is you have that blue route for protection, um, so it'll release into the flat if no protectors coming. Um, just love blue routes. If you have a play with blue routes, you gotta try to find potentially a way to use it. So um, what's great about it too is I can max protect now, seven man protection scheme, and a blue route that's gonna release. So nice protection here. And I go out for the, the ball uh, with Spaith there. Uh, so those are the two plays I really like from there. Uh, to, that bunch formation. Typically I'll come out and mesh though. And I'll use that Steelers cross. The other play. Uh, I'll wrinkle it in. Now this play vertical. Uh, is Seattle verticals. A.K.A. whatever you want from the same formation. I got a blue route again. So again I can keep uh, Mendenhall on the block. Block, Spaith, seven man protection. I'm okay. I feel safe against pressure. Uh, now, what typically I like to do my base setup for this, I, sh I slant Spythe uh, to the left. I will drag Ward down, and then what I like to do is motion out Wallace. As you can see, he'll get that little animation, burst up the sideline, uh, lead him up, see if I can get Wallace one-on-one. -on -one. It's a slower DB that is like Taylor, though, so he is pretty good. Uh, so, again, we'll show you what those reads look like. So, you're going to have reads over the middle. You're going to have the little curl route as well, as well as the deep post over the middle of the field. So there's Wallace, motions out again. I love this play right here. It was a bad throw, but I love that route. That route, I, I promise you, just trust me on this. They're going to be they're gonna be forced to put pay so much attention to that motioned out route that what's going to happen is they're going to cheat this safety up. They're going to cheat this safety up like so. You know, maybe they're going to blitz them. Maybe they're going to drop them in the yellow zone. I don't, you know, I don't know what they're going to do with them. Put them in a the flat zone, whatever. What's going to happen is they're going to cheat up with that safety trying to stop that play there. And then what's going to happen is you're going to get that streaking big time post. And that post is so deadly. And the reason it's deadly is watch the break on the ball here, ladies and gentlemen. Watch this break. This It's a cut that the, the defender just can't compete with. It's just a hard cut. It's crisp. Bang. There it is again. One more time. And bang. And reverse bang. And bang. Reverse bang. And bang. And then you just get some space, especially a guy like Sanders, who's got some good speed out there. Um, it, it's just an overall good play. Uh, over the middle of the field, let's not forget, we have the good crossing patterns. So you have Spate there, some his height, 6'7". That's why he was able to complete that ball there, just outmatched his opponent. Now, let's not also forget one of my other favorite plays against man here is Motion Wallace in. Snap once he gets to the, the sideline there. And now you, you're looking to get into space with him. You're going to try and cross up coverage here because he's on that wheel route. You can snap before he breaks. His momentum will bring him out, and then he's going to run his route back up the sideline there. Just a different little wrinkle play that you can mix in. It's a very good play, as you can see, to beat man-to-man. -man. Um, I'm not sure what this play looks like against zone. Against zone, this play is filthy because that route to Wallace, you'll see. The, the zone falls away from it. The zone does not cover it, as you can see. It's up the sideline and you're good to go. So again